Give me a little tickle. Give me a little tickle. Come on. Give me a little tickle. Tickle it. Tickle my thigh. <laughs> I'll tell you something right now. I know you're playing with me. No, I'm trying to, and to be I honest, I was just trying to protect, because I know. And let me tell you something, this country boy right here is not really intimidating. Invasive. I'll follow you home tonight. <laughs> I'm like you to f <laughs> right in your chair. <laughs> there you have it, okay? The perfect Alpha reaction to the situation. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyles. Today we're gonna to talk about alpha males versus beta males. Okay, the age old debate, the age old question. Girls seem to have a natural hardware programming for what happens to be an alpha male and what happens to be a beta male. Okay, so I have a lot of girls ask me, they're like, Okay, I know you're a dating coach. How do you teach guys to be alpha? How do you teach guys to get out of that beta-ness? What do you define as an alpha? And I play this little game with them. Okay, so I'll be at the mall with them, or I'll be at the park, or I'll be somewhere in public with them, and I'll say, we're gonna play a game. I'm gonna point to a guy, and in my mind, I'm gonna think, is he alpha or beta? Okay, or I'll even just say it out loud, and they can tell me if they agree with me, and then they choose if he's alpha or beta. Okay, without having interacted with him, without having spent a whole lot of time watching him, okay? Just sizing it up really quickly. Is that an alpha guy or is that a beta guy, okay? And almost 100% of the time, the girl's assessment lines up with my assessment, okay? Now, why is that? Think about that for a second. And for all of you guys watching, most of you have this power too. You can look at a guy in a group and you can tell, is this a beta male or is this an alpha male? Now, what is it that gives us this natural intuition and this natural judgment? Okay, so let's explore how we come about to have this judgment and how we can transition from the beta category to the alpha category, which is where we want to be, which is where men are going to respect us, which is where women are going to respect us and be attracted to us. Before we go any further, please like this video below. Also press the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it. That will alert you of my new free videos five days a week, Sunday through Thursday, as well as my YouTube live every Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Going back a little bit in time, prior to the human species, looking at other mammalian species, okay, we have alpha leaders in these groups of animals. Now, if we're looking at orangutans, for instance, they're a very close genetic relative to humans. In orangutans, there is the tribal leader, okay, he is the one that bangs the women. His genes are being passed on through these women, okay, into the further generations. It's breeding the strong, the dominant, okay, characteristics. And then you have a bunch of beta male followers that if they were to challenge this alpha leader, he would kill them, okay? Now, the females, what do they do? They respond to this alpha behavior, okay, and which I'll cover in a second what that entails. But they're also sneaking away when the alpha guy of their tribe isn't paying attention and they're going off to bang other alpha males from other tribes, okay? And they're doing it behind the alpha guy's back. Now if he finds out, the guy from the main tribe, the alpha guy, he will go and kill that girl, okay? Or kill that woman. There's no law amongst the animal tribes, okay? But what makes that alpha leader orangutan the alpha guy? Here's some characteristics that define the alpha male leader in the orangutan example, as well as in the human species. He is dominant. He leads the group. He's authoritative. Okay, he carries himself with a presence. There's this whole aura around him of power. Okay, people want to command respect for him, men and women. And I could keep listing traits after traits after traits. Okay, but. There's two really great examples I'd like to show you from one of my favorite uh, popular comedy shows on Funny or Die, which is also on YouTube, with Zach Galifianakis from the movie The Hangover. And he does an interview with what I think is a perfect example of a beta male, and then he does an interview with what I think is a perfect example of an alpha male. Okay, so we'll go over some more qualities after this. 
But let's take a look at the beta male example first and pay attention to his body language and how he carries himself and how he responds to things that are thrown at him. Okay, let's take a look. Hi, welcome to Between Two Ferns with uh, Zach Galifianakis. I'm your host and uh, my guest um, this afternoon is Michael S Sarah, uh, actor. Welcome, Michael. Oh, thank you. All right, so notice right off the bat, he looks very meek. He looks very unsure of himself. He looks quiet, he looks reserved, he looks passive, he looks breakable, okay? He looks like he could be snapped in half, okay? He looks like he could just cave at any moment. It looks like you could just nudge him and he would fall out of his chair. It's hard to command respect for a guy that's carrying himself like this. He's unsure of himself in the way he's just sitting there, okay? He obviously doesn't go to the gym or lift weights. He obviously is not gonna be speaking with a commanding presence with a dominant tone, okay, with body language and expressivity. He's going to be meek and reserved and withdrawn, okay? And you gather all this immediately, boom, right when you see him. He doesn't need to have a long conversation with you, okay? And this is how other men are going to size up a male as being beta or alpha, and this is how other women are gonna size it up. Okay, now let's see how this unfolds and how he falls more into this beta characteristic. Uh, <clears throat> Michael, you're an, you're an actor. Uh... Tell us about acting. I started acting when I was about nine years old, and uh, I always had a passion for it. Um, my mother got me into it. Um, she entered me into the classes, and, uh, and then I got an agent, mm -hmm. and hey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 2002, I actually made my way into the States. 2002. Yeah. After 9 11. Okay, notice how the host, Zach Galifianakis, is challenging him. He's doing the snoring sound, okay? So as Michael Sarah is explaining how he got into acting, Zach Galifianakis is sitting there. Okay, and Michael Sarah notices this, but he's too much of a baby, he's too much of a pussy to acknowledge what's going on. Okay, he's too much of a pussy to stand up for himself. And you can't even imagine him standing up for himself. Even if he stood up for himself, it would seem forced and out of place. Okay, and you can see this in different groups where you have a guy that's stuck in this beta role and he might try to rise up and be alpha, but it's not congruent with all the different traits he's personifying in his normal existence of just sitting there and existing, okay? so. As you see, right when he came on the camera, you see him as weak and passive and meek and frail and reserved and he's not going to be able to project his voice and all this stuff. And then you see the host diss him and he just takes it. And he just kind of is like, oh, and he tries to continue on with his story in a very timid way. Okay, even when Zach busts out the 9-11 joke, he's still just kind of sitting there like he's uncomfortable. Okay, he doesn't know what to do. Okay, now let's continue and see what else he happens to do in this interview. Thanks. Have I told you that I... See, it continues. Now Zach is booing him. Michael just kind of sits there, not defending himself, not knowing what to do. Okay, looking very uncomfortable. Have I told you that I enjoyed the movie super bad? No. Good. But it, a lot of fun. It's a fun movie to watch, fun movie to go take a friend to. What do you think about the inappropriate humor for, let's say, a 12 year old, somebody your age, uh, that maybe they aren't ready for that kind of vag talk? I think it's, uh, you know, any kind of. for a young person, any kind yeah, of. Yeah, I think it's any kind of young person. For any kind of uh, any kind of inappropriate talk, mm -hmm. inappropriate talk. Uh, vaginal or otherwise, vaginal or otherwise, uh, it might be uh, you know just hey don't go see it. <laughs> You're right about that. Oh God, too much fun. Zach Galifianakis continues to make fun of him. He's imitating how Michael Sarah talks. Okay, he's saying you shouldn't go see his movie, taking digs at the movie. Okay, the whole time Michael Sarah is very unsure of himself. He just continues to fumble around and explain things in the face of being made fun of. Okay, you almost want to just reach into the screen and make Michael Sarah stand up and fucking 
be a man, okay, and break out of being a pussy and fucking put Zach Galifianakis in his place. But as you may note, that would seem uncharacteristic, okay? It would seem forced, it would seem out of place, okay? So he needs to do a whole lot of work on himself before he can even get to that point, okay? So let's watch my favorite part, the tickle test from Zach. Uh, future projects, what, what do you got going on? Um, you know, hopefully a few movies uh, in the future. I'm not doing anything at the moment. Um, I've been staying at home. My brother's been pretty sick for a long time. Um, so I'd kind of like ticklish? to be home for the... Sorry? You need ticklish? No. Huh? You need ticklish right there? You ticklish up here? <laughs> You're laughing. You must be ticklish. Go up the ladder a little bit. I'm ticklish right here. Can you give me a tickle? Give me a little tickle. Give me a little tickle. Come on. Tickle. Tickle it. Tickle my thigh. What are your hobbies? The, <laughs> the emotions that this clip draws out in the viewer. Okay, as you're watching this, a lot of you guys that are watching this can probably relate to this, okay? Me personally, I was the most shy guy in my entire high school out of 700 people, okay? This is pretty much how I would have acted if someone did what Zach was doing in this situation, okay? He doesn't fight back. He's just kind of like, you know, passively very reserved and very meekly and very passively just kind of like, uh, 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 like making these sounds and you just feel like very uncomfortable as the viewer, like, like something is being wronged here. Okay, in this clip, this is why this video is so important. This clip, this little section here where you see him kind of like, oh, like that as he's being violated, like it's a sexual joke. It's supposed to be funny, but he's totally uncomfortable. Okay, he's passive, he's being violated. He, he doesn't know what to do. This clip represents why if you are a beta male and, and act like this guy, look like this guy, have the body language of this guy, the facial expression of this guy, if you don't have boundaries of people like this guy. That whole uncomfortable scene and all the negative emotions you felt like, oh my God, like a cringe situation. That is why men will not respect you until you fix that and become an alpha male. That is why women will not be attracted to you, okay, until you fix that and become an alpha male. Okay, women do not want a guy like that. As you can see, you just feel bad for the guy, right? His value is just very, very, very low, okay? In the animal kingdom, that guy would be the follower, okay? While the cool alpha dude was banging all the chicks and commanding and taking lead and being dominant and passing on his genes. So I hope that was very useful for you to understand. When people say, what is a beta male? I think this is a great example of all the characteristics. I could go on and on and on and just keep listing and listing and listing them. But his body language and the way he acts in this situation is a perfect representation of beta male behavior. Now, let's look at the alpha male example, okay? Now notice the posture, the size of the next clip, okay, of the next guest. Notice how he's carrying himself, how he's responding to the jokes, okay? And notice what you feel just radiating off of him, okay? There's a lot of things you're gonna see immediately, and then as you see him interact, there's just a whole bunch more that comes off of it. All right, so let's take a look. Hello, my name is Seth Galifianakis. Um, <clears throat> I'm filling in for my brother, Zach, because he couldn't be here today. Uh, he's at adult fat camp. My guest is a famous actor, a humanitarian. Please welcome Sean Penn. Thank you, Sean, for being on the show. You're very welcome. All right, so in this example, you see Sean Penn, all right, right off the bat, he's dressing nicer, he clearly works out, he has a better hairstyle, okay, his clothes, Michael Sarah was wearing like a little thing that someone would wear in like middle school with like pencil thin arms, okay, he was kind of meek and unsure of himself, whereas Sean Penn is sitting there dominant, kind of like commanding presence, okay, so you already get a vibe that not just in terms of like physical strength and dominance and his ability to probably win a fight, there's just much more radiating off of him that women are going to be drawn to and men are going to respect. Okay, he hasn't even really said very much yet except for you're welcome. And you see him 
just radiating a nice presence and a sharp contrast to what we saw in Michael Cera. Your brother Ballpoint? Mm. Oh, that's funny. It's like the, the guy's first name is Ballpoint, and then because your last name's Penn. I bet you get that a lot, like when people's like, hey, you, it'd be funny if your name was Felt or uh, you like Felt Penn, or mm -hmm. is your first name Sylvania? Yep. I thought, I, usually I don't think my brother's that much funny, but I gotta give him some credit for that one. That's a pretty good spoof. Mm. Sean Penn clearly is holding the dominant position. All right, it's very obvious. He's kind of giving a face of like disinterest and disgust. He's not being passive and unsure of himself and not knowing what to do. And he's kind of like crossing his arms. He's looking at the host like, you're a fucking idiot, right? And it gets even more intense <laughs> as the interview goes on until he finally hits a, a boundary point. So let's keep watching. Who is the true movie star of our time right now? Um, you know, I guess the, 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 the one who sort of has it all is Ryan Reynolds. Jack Nicholson. Hmm? Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is... Um, Van Wilder. Yeah, I saw him in something. Jack Nicholson is a, he's that crazy guy that sits at the Lakers games. You hang out with him? Sometimes. Where do you guys like to eat? Do y'all go to like Long John Silver's and something fancy like that? So now Zach makes a joke about does Sean Penn and Jack Nicholas go to Long John Silver's, which is a shitty restaurant in the United States. Okay, Sean Penn looks like disgusted again. He's like exhaling like, like is this gonna be fucking over already or not, right? It would be fun if maybe you and I and uh, Jack Nicholas went to dinner and stuff and I could tell him some of my movie ideas. Uh -huh. I have a pug and my pug, his name's Funyuns. I made this captain's hat for him and I put it right on his head and he's crazy looking. It's like, that guy needs to, uh, Funyuns needs to be in the movies. He's got a captain's hat on him. And you know, you just take the dog, you put him in a movie and, and you know, he'd be like a taxi driver or something like that. And people would be like, why is there a pug with a captain's hat being a taxi driver in New York City? You might have something there. I'll tell you something right now. I know you're playing with me. No, I'm trying to, and to be I honest, I'm just trying to protect, because I know. And let me tell you something. This country boy right here is not really intimidating. Invasive. I'll follow you home tonight. <laughs> I'll knock you the fuck out right in your chair. There you have it, okay? The perfect alpha reaction to the situation. All right, Zach Galifianakis, who's impersonating his twin brother, okay, with a stupid accent. He sees that Sean Penn is not falling into his stupid jokes, so he makes a comment how he's gonna follow him home. Sean Penn looks over and says he'll fucking knock him out right in his chair, all right? And he has a look on his face like he's dead serious. Like he's not fucking around. All right, that's a perfect example of boundarying someone, standing up for yourself. Whereas Michael Cera just kind of like tried to continue answering the question, you know, nervously looked around, nervously, you know, made some laughter, some sounds. And when he's being pulled to do the, the tickle thing, he's like, uh, uh, uh. tickle. Come on. So you got this whole feeling with the Michael Cera thing, like, oh my God, I feel bad for this guy. He's such a loser. And with the Sean Penn thing, you're like, wow, this guy's a fucking boss, right? Sean Penn, in this situation, is the representation of the alpha male. That is the guy that girls want to fuck. That is the guy that is respected by other men. Let's take a look at this article here from a recent 4th of July party from 2018. And who is Sean Penn throwing a party with? Leonardo DiCaprio, okay? Equipped fully with lots of scantily clad bikini models. Okay, do you think Michael Sarah is doing that? Probably not, okay? And granted, these are actors, but these are well-known people, and I think it's a good example, especially in light of throwing in some comedy. So closing thoughts. A picture is worth a thousand words, so is a video of multiple picture frames. You got to see what a prime example of a beta male versus an alpha male is. You got to see how they react to the same interviewer trying to fuck with them, trying to disrespect them, and toy with them. Okay, one was passive and meek and frail and pathetic. The other was strong, dominant, didn't put up with shit, and he just commanded a presence like, don't fuck with me, I'm the man, okay? And then that translates over, he's probably banging tons of hot pussy, and Michael Sarah is probably at home jerking off, 
or gearing up to be his next pushover role, okay? I hope this was helpful, guys. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Please press the like button below and the subscribe button as well. Make sure to press the notification bell next to subscribe so you can get notified of my five free videos every Sunday through Thursday and of my YouTube live every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Stay tuned for a lot more good content coming in 2019. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Take care.